Good evening, I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC Evening News for Wednesday, September 3rd. In our top story, more flights out of Latin and South America could soon be landing in Barbados, opening a new gateway for the tourism industry. Acting Prime Minister Richard Seeley revealed the plans as a major tourism conference got underway at the Hilton Barbados. Shane Seeley was there. Delegates from across the region and the OAS today heard what Barbados is doing to boost the competitiveness of its tourism industry. The occasion, the 22nd Inter-American Congress of Ministers and High-Level Authorities of Tourism. Now, the acting Prime Minister, Richard Seeley, has revealed that negotiations are underway with officials in Colombia and in Panama, two countries with major gateways into Latin America and South America. Our diversification policy has also led the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. to negotiate to expand our air linkages with Bogota, Colombia, with Avianca. We expect this strategy to pay dividends as Bogota is one of the largest cities in South America. We, of course, intend as well to facilitate closer ties to Panama, and we will continue to negotiate for that air route, hopefully with COPA, from Panama City to Barbados. Mr. Seeley also gave an update on GAL's direct service out of Brazil. He says the performance has been encouraging over the last year or so. The service has contributed approximately 4,641 visitors from this new market since 2013. Sao Paulo, the largest city in the Americas and one of the largest in the world, and a major center of both culture and economic activity, represents our first gateway uh, in our plans to expand aggressively into Latin America. However, the issue of intra-regional air travel remains a concern. The issue was raised by the Assistant Secretary General of the OAS, Albert Ramden. One aspect that continues to be of great concern is the relative limited transportation options and connections between OAS member states. Recently, we have seen an improvement in this regard, in this region, and this development should certainly be encouraged. With sustained economic growth in our region and a growing middle class with increasing purchasing power available, promoting tourism among the member states of the OES represents an attractive market on its own. During the session, delegates also got a taste of the best of Barbadian culture, which included sweet soca monarch Biggie Irie with a performance. But now it's down to business, and for the remainder of the day and into tomorrow, we'll be focused on proposals charting the way forward for a more competitive and sustainable tourism industry here in Barbados and across the region. I'm Shane Seeley for CBC News. Thanks, Shane. Well, there's a view that young men in Barbados who commit crime, even murder, are not bad people, just misguided, misinformed, and in need of direction. That assessment from Abdul Rahman, one of the coordinators of the September 3rd Foundation. He says impressions can be reversed, but it calls for black people to understand their history. He was speaking during a ceremony in Heroes Square to commemorate the lives of Nikita Belgrave, Kalisha Oliver, Tiffany Harden, Pearl Cornelius, Shanna Griffith, and Ke Kellyanne Welch. They perished in the blaze after the Campus Trends store was robbed and firebombed four years ago. The event, which included a minute of silence at midday, was also held to reflect on violent crime in Barbados, particularly crime against women. If we're serious about stopping the killing, if we're serious about affecting change, not for one day, but permanent change, the, the number one thing that we must look at is rebuilding the black family. Did you hear me? Because this is where the problem starts. Oft time young men see their mothers being abused. Oft time a, a, a young man will see their mother and the mother demonstrates that she doesn't have real love for self Therefore, how can you respect other women? We got to start by rebuilding the family if we're serious. 
Meanwhile, president of the SAVE Foundation, Liesl Daisley, says she's tired of women being abused and she's disappointed that the domestic abuse legislation has not yet been passed. She said men need to respect women. We are not objects. We are not things to invest in. We are not targets. We are not to be used and taken advantage of. How can men respect their mother and their sisters, but have no respect for their woman, their wife, or the mother of their children? Meanwhile, some of the family members of the six young women told CBC they still hold their loved ones close to their heart. People think, seeing that it's four years that has passed, that it will be easier, but really and truly it gets harder because you miss them even more. When I come down here, and when I leave home, I was actually trembling because I was over in New York and only coming Monday, then I just come to face this, you know what I mean? It really had me feel down. But this is what made me here. So I could have been still in New York. It was the one that identified her body in night. So it is really hard. People think that it get easier, but really and truly it doesn't. It just feels like it happened yesterday. Nothing changed. Not a second, minute, hour pass every day and we don't remember Tiffany. Prime Minister Fandel Stewart has highlighted how external shocks are affecting small island developing states. While chairing a discussion at the third international conference on SIDS in Samoa, the Barbadian leader said SIDS are facing many challenges. These range from the global economic crisis and are affected as developed countries implement cost-cutting measures. He says many of these small states depend on trade and tourism. Mr. Stewart also says debt sustainability is a long-standing challenge facing many SIDS and governments are limited to respond effectively to external shocks. He's pushing for improved public sector capacity. Particularly in the area of sustainable fiscal management and debt sustainability would be instrumental for sustainable economic development in small island developing states. Some argue that there is a potential for SIDS to pursue sustainable economic development through steadily raising economic productivity, generating income and employment by fully utilizing their endowments and resources in a sustainable manner, paying particular attention to the sustainable management of their environmental assets as well as human resources. In doing so, it is critical for SIDS to adopt through partnerships for capacity building, integrated planning of economic activities to decouple economic development from environmental degradation. Barbados is among 21 countries to benefit from 339 million euros from the European Union. The European Commissioner for Development, Andres Paibals, and country representatives from the 21 ACP countries co-signed the National Indicative Programs under the 11th European Development Fund in Samoa. The money will be used for developmental programs during the period 2014 to 2020. We'll have more news ahead in just a moment, but first, we want to hear from you on the question, do you believe young people involved in crime are not bad, but are misguided, misinformed, and in need of direction? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of the news. Within young minds, there is vision. Vision that can lead us all to a brighter future. From across the region, these young visionaries took up the challenge. With the most outstanding winning their way to Tampa, Florida with their teachers for exciting visits to Disney's Epcot theme park and NASA. Teachers also discovered the engaging experiments which could be done. We work with very simple materials and so on in little workshop labs to, to make, to, to replicate very more, much more complex pieces of apparatus and the principles are still there so that to me was pretty important. Turn on to science, technology, engineering and mathematics and share your vision. Take up the Sajikor Visionaries Challenge. Call our Sajikor office at 227-7228 or visit sajikorvisionaries.com for full details. Sajikor, wise financial thinking for life. A1 is more than our name. 
It's our identity. Every day, our job is to provide you with A1 convenience, A1 quality, A1 service, A1 variety, A1 taste, and of course, A1 savings. Identify with A1 supermarkets this and every Monday and get 5% off A1 supermarket. Experience family, enjoy food. It was a mistake to send the National Conservation Commission impasse with the trade unions over layoffs to the Employment Rights Tribunal. That's the view of General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Dennis Clark, who was speaking during a press conference at the NUPW's Dalkeith headquarters. It was an error because clearly we see that the tribunal, though you had named persons to sit on the tribunal, there were no positions to start. And right now, the, uh, the delays, I can't see any justifiable reason now for the delays. That's why you don't accept, um, you know, the excuse about infrastructure. We didn't see this and we didn't see that. Because from day one, when, we, when they met with the union and took information from the union, then they should have had things rolling. Mr. Clark also says the union is not prepared to wait indefinitely on the tribunal. We are seriously looking at setting a, a, a deadline date for the tribunal to really get kicking, right? They, they, they would have done a couple of things, and we believe that they have, they have all the information long enough that they can get started, and therefore we will got, we are giving it consideration, but we will not say what we will do. I guess in the fullness of time you would hear the, um, how, we plan, how we plan to approach it. Some Barbadian promoters have their eyes on the lucrative spring break market in the United States. And if the group led by Chetman Stewart is successful, the 2015 Jew Canal Carnival will have the 18 to 20 year olds from colleges across the U.S. among its revelers. He told CBC News Jew Canal was held earlier this year for the first time when the University of the West Indies, due to insufficient financing, decided to cancel its carnival. Mr. Stewart says if they're successful, it will be the first spring break carnival in the Caribbean. All over the world, if you check where they have spring break, they always say that a percentage, a large percentage of people return to the islands where they have spring break as young teenagers, 19, 2018. You know, that's what we want here in Barbados to know. We want people, you know, we want people to, to come back. So that is why we took the opportunity then to take Juvenile Carnival probably for SGS and turn it now into Spring Break Carnival. So that when people come here now for Juvenile Carnival in four or five years down the line, they'll be coming back to Barbados now because this was a destination that they had a good time at. They could bring their kids and stuff like that. The longtime producer was very impressed with the creativity of the costumes and the marketing ploys used by the student band leaders. We put a cap on what you can sell the package for so that the students will still be able to afford it. We'll do the same thing next year again. So now, here now you have students overseas going on a website, seeing what is being offered in this, in this section or in this band and, and registering for it, coming here and jumping with costumes that are actually made here in Barbados by, and designed by, by Barbadians. Regional news next, but first a reminder that we want to hear from you on the question, do you believe young people involved in crime are not bad, but are misguided, misinformed, and in need of direction? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of the news.